Warp is a cross-platform terminal for Mac, Linux, and now Windows that is originally famous for bringing AI into the CLI. However, I do most of my AI coding within Visual Studio and normally keep my CLI commands pretty simple, so it's not something that I really tried. Now, however, I've given Warp a fair go and I'm happy to report that it is more than just an AI agent for your terminal and has some pretty unique features. What's great is that for the most part, Warp is actually free. The features that are paid is higher limits of using AI, along with the ability to share your sessions with your teammates. I understand that when there is AI, you might be concerned about privacy, especially in the terminal where we can be running commands using private keys. Fortunately, any command you execute or its output is never stored on Warp servers or used for model training, and Warp is fairly transparent about their privacy policy. Now let's first talk about some of the non-AI features that you get with Warp that you don't normally get with other terminals. Now in standard terminals, as you enter new commands, your command input section starts to drift towards the bottom of the screen. But with Warp, it starts off pinned to the bottom of the screen, and as you enter new commands, it stays there, and I think this records better for content creation. Additionally, a neat little perk over here is that it tells you how much time each command took. Now, another thing that annoys me about the Mac default terminal at the very least is that it doesn't fill up to take the entire window real estate. Even when I maximize it, I'm left with some dead space. So normally I make the compromise of just leaving a margin around the whole thing. Warp, on the other hand, fills up the window beautifully. For most day-to-day -day tasks, you don't normally need to write extra long CLI commands, but once in a while, you do need to do something like that. As an example, here's how you can create a new Next app without using the demo make utility that I normally use. Now, if I wanted to experiment and instead of using NPM, I wanted to try PNPM, I would need to move the cursor from the end all the way to over here. Fortunately, with Warp, you can just use your mouse to move the cursor wherever you want. As an aside, for some of these command arguments, Warp has also figured out the documentation and shows that as tooltips. Warp is full of these neat little things that you keep learning as you use it more and more. Another nice feature with Warp is that it has nice autocomplete and it can surprise you from time to time, making it easier for you to open up, for example, different folders. And another thing to note over here is that it supports multiple tabs and you can even arrange it into different layouts if you want. Additionally, if I exit all of these tabs with exiting the program and then open it up again, it brings back the tabs that I had opened previously. And Warp is chock full of features that you can configure. For example, if you don't want your tabs sessions to be preserved, you can go into your settings, go into features, and then from here, you can disable restoring of closed sessions. Another feature that I quite liked is the ability to search within the inputs and the outputs. For example, here are some of the code samples from the Boolean art React course. And if I want to see what code samples exist for use transition, I can simply search that and find the result. And for any command that you've executed, you can actually copy its output quite easily. Traditionally, you would have to pipe this output into a file and then open that file within some code editor in order to do some of the stuff that you can now do with just the Bob CLI. Now let's talk about its AI features. I know I said that I don't think I need AI in the CLI, but when it is as convenient as Warp has made it, I did find it quite useful. Now to go from command mode into agent mode, you simply use the shortcut that it's pointing out. For a Mac, it's command I. It has a number of agents available, including OpenAI as well as DeepSeek, but I just stuck with the default one as I found it sufficient for my purpose. If at any point you want to go back to command mode, just press the same shortcut again. I recently updated the lessons for the upcoming Next.js course for Boolean art to use the current latest version of Next.js. And just to quickly see what that version is for all of the lessons, I can actually just ask AI to read the package.json of each of the lesson folders and then look at the Next.js version and then tell me what it is. Now with Warp, you can actually configure the AI agents to execute commands on your behalf as well. So not only will it figure out the command, it will also execute it for you and then take a look at the result and then parse it out for you as well. So in this particular case, it found that for all of the lessons, it's using the exact same version of Next.js, which is currently 15.1.6. Everything related to AI within Warp has its own dedicated page within your user settings. From here, you can even completely disable it if you want. You can also see what your usage is based on your current plan. And in terms of autonomy, that is the agent executing commands on your behalf, you can control what commands it's allowed to execute and what commands it needs to stay away from. 
as an example some things that we don't want it doing is downloading stuff from the internet deleting files on a file system or executing some arbitrary string we've used warp to answer queries about our file system but let's see how it performs in carrying out edits to a real world code base we've recently updated our next year's course on boolean art to start using next 15 and one of the new features that come with Next15 is the ability to use TS config files for Next along with MJS config files for ESLint. Previously, the Next config was only MJS and the ESLint config file was only JSON. So let's see if WAP can update all the config files in the lessons to use the new formats. As it is common with AI, you sort of need to figure out the prompt that will get the AI to do the thing that you want. So I will sort of spell it out for it. I will ask it to update all the folders in lessons, remove the files one by one, which will be ESLint rc.json as well as next config mjs, and then I will ask it to copy the files from the example folder. Based on this assignment, the agent has decided to create a script for us, and this is actually nice because I can sort of view the commands that it's going to run in a script format instead of having to look at the commands one by one. It looks mostly fine, so we ask the agent to commit this file. With this file created, we could execute it ourselves, but then we would sort of have to look at the output. So let's just get the agent to execute the script as well. It will ask us permission to execute the script on our behalf. We simply press enter to give it the permission. It finds that the script does not have file system execute permissions, so it will ask us to add that. We okay that modification, and now that the script does have execute permission, it asks us if it is okay to run that script again. We allow it, so it executes the script and summarizes the output for us. Now I wouldn't make such modifications unless this repository was under git control and indeed we can actually verify if it did what we wanted it to do using the modifications noticed by git. We can see that it deleted the ESLint RC files and created the new eslint.config.mjs files and while it did create the new next config files, it didn't delete the old next config mjs files. Because the agent created a bash script file for us, we can actually review that code and try to figure out why it failed to delete the old next config files. The error over here is actually quite subtle and the reason is that the comment over here is perfectly fine. However, the code is not. It will actually try to delete dot next config files instead of simply next config files. The fix over here is quite easy. We simply replace that dot so that it looks for next and not dot next. With this modification done, let's jump back to warp and ask it to execute the script again. Once more, the agent confirms our intent that we want to run the script. We give the go ahead, it executes the script and summarizes the output. Let's verify that it has worked by looking at our trusty git. And indeed, the next config mjs files are now deleted. Honestly, I've tried other terminal emulators in the past, but mostly been left disappointed as they don't really give me something that I find game changing. Warp has been a pleasant surprise and as someone who's created and seen a lot of open source projects that end up struggling to sustain themselves, I'm actually happy that they have a nice business model that gives us a nice terminal emulator for free. As always, thank you for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.